Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Baker Mayfield, the Bucks, tough L in the playoffs at Detroit. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. <laughs> Before we dive into the video, quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of the channel. Not only is it a great, cheap way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content over there. So hop over there, join, become a member, support the channel. If you're wondering where the heck all the college all 22 is, check out the Quarterback School Patreon community. Let me know what you think. All the draft evals stuff is over there. I certainly appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. Baker Mayfield, the Bucks, tough playoff. L in Detroit. We're going to break it down. Better late than never. Right here, we're going to get a little short post. Okay, this is wing slot. We are hot off the slot. We don't see it. Sack. So again, the consistency, the importance of pass protection, knowing where your hots are, having answers. Baker is essentially blind right here. So what's going on? We start in three by one wing. We get to wing slot two by two. And we're going to get pressure off the edge up top so right here five person protection in what is universally called a 5-0 look so five offensive linemen five defensive linemen anybody else here is going to have some sort of pass protection adjustment because we're all out on the route we'll talk about what this ends up looking like i'm used to calling that short post okay, whatever we're doing out of the backfield here all for me I prefer to throw into the hot. So first of all, you have to see it. Okay, so here's the hot. Whatever route this is right here, to me, I would like this to be a peak or looky hot. All that means in my verbiage is as you run and someone vacates off your grill here, just turn and look. So look and continue. And if the quarterback sees it and is hot, he can just raise up and put it on you. Again, easier said than done. Not the hardest thing in the world, but right here you can see they do not have a plan to be hot up top. So we're unblocked and the slot is not looking, right? Neither wide receiver up top is looking. Furthermore, the quarterback is not looking and it's a wrap. You know, for me, this play is a really good play. I'm used to calling this short post. To me, this is a shallow or gather post. The ball's oftentimes trying to get to this right here. If it's not there on the backside, I think universally this thing is a go and a comeback. I think they run it right here with a dagger. So instead of that, you bring it in here. The, lots of teams run iterations of this. But you have to have a hot answer up top. And you get a 5-0 look. You got the potential to be hot on both sides. And we get smacked. And again, you, you can see it's coming open. He probably finds the shallow. If he works back across to the dagger, but we're hot, we never see it. So again, you can see the 5-0 look, right? Center's covered, guards out on the four eyes, tackles out. Baker's never even looking to the right. So just nowhere near good enough, and now we got third and forever. So that third and forever turns into third and 16 and a pick. Down here to the bottom, wrap in Mike Evans, you know, off the hands, interception tough on baker stat sheet and i i will say to me this ball obviously shouldn't get intercepted it gets a volleyball set up and it's a very very difficult throw versus an exotic covered structure is the ball right on him yep right on the face is it a dangerous throw i would say dangerous ish if that's a word Batted balls, tip balls over the middle, bad things happen. Okay, now it's third and forever, third and 16, right? Even if we catch this contested wrap in, how about that little flip at the end? Does he flip it to the baker? Damn, it's a bad feeling. So this little wrap in, what I'm calling the wrap in right here. At the snap, I think it's got the potential to be all right. It's all right. Now the, the bummer is it's third and 16. So even if you catch it here, you're going to have to, get some to get a first down. 
That's the first part. The other part is just the covered structure. So to me here, this looks like middle field open, right? Two safety split, but that's not what it is, right? Third down, you're going to see exotic shit. They actually ask a guy from the line of scrimmage who's right here. He's running to the middle of the field. This ends up being drop eight, what I'm used to calling 33 backer. People call it different shit. It doesn't really matter what you call it. It's a cover three structure. And then these deep safeties are just kind of hanging here in this kind of deep curl. So they're almost dropping down, but hanging here because they know you have to do what? Get 16 yards for a first down. So as you run in here, this is really con congested. So it's a really nice coverage structure. It's a bit unfortunate, you know, that the ball gets tipped. But watch this coverage structure as he runs out of there. So he's got to go. And that safety is just sitting flat-footed, right? Yeah. Oh. Tip, bummer, bad news. Now, the crazy thing here is even if Mike Evans were to catch it right there, look at the first down marker. First down marker is on the other 47. There's three guys there. So it's a dangerous throw more than anything else. This is one of those ones where you just kind of have to take your medicine, throw it underneath, punt, pin them. Instead, pick on the road, bummer. So just the, the decision-making, the execution, you know, even if it's there, I would say you could pull apart the offensive design, the architecture. It's not even going to get a first down. Just throw it on the tight end, throw it on the back, live to fight another day. Instead of turning it over, momentum, pick, all the stuff we're trying to avoid. Rough start here. Next one here, third and two. Love this one. Mike Evans, the number three down here to the bottom. We're going to get to quads, four by one. The new four, Mike Evans now, running across on the crosser or the over. Nice job from Baker hitting them. Not a perfect throw, but certainly a good enough throw. You know, maybe you hit him in stride. He breaks the tackle. This thing turns into punt return right. You can see him slow down just a little, right? Watch Mike Evans' gate there across the field. Nice, strong hands, big chunk. Love throwing in on third and two. You almost universally know you're going to get man. You know, I know more teams have started playing Tampa in this regard to take away certain things. But middle field closed. We're in quads, right? So four eligibles, one empty. We're asking our stud as the number three here to run away. Reason why I like these runaways is because almost universally you're going to get outside leverage by these guys. See how they're all kind of hedging outside inside the divider. So as you run away, he's going to be trailing behind him, thinking he's funneling to the middle players. And he is funneling to the middle players. The problem is, is we're not throwing this ball. We're throwing all the way across. So we're running away from that coverage, away from that rat or thief guy underneath. So just a really nice job dialing it up. Third and two, nice execution, great catch, good rhythm timing, balls on him, multiple runaways. Again, if you're just looking at the offensive structure, we got four good runaways here, even with the check down. That's a big chunk on third and short. Love the aggressiveness. The ball comes out quickly. We're decisive. We're throwing it to one of our best players. Boom. And again, just the ball location that slightly behind him. Nice strong hands, big first down. Next one here, beautiful play call. We're going to rip a seam down here to the bottom off play action. Pull the guard. Whoop. Got him. <laughs> oh, man, that's a hell of a play. Hell of a play design. Excellent execution. Nice job by Baker seeing the rotation. Can't get it on him fast enough. Strike of a throw. Beautiful. So love the offensive play design here. What's going on? We are faking this thing downhill, right? We're pulling the guard. We're going to have all this action of these second-level players coming downhill. Okay? Then we're going to get seams. So we're up the seam. We're up the seam. Normally, when you're running seams like this, you want to go away from the middle field close safety. So if you get rotation down this way, that would be a mean that the window is probably going to be right here as he works to the middle of the field. So you can see this thing, and it's compounded by the fact that we run this little like quick now screen. So we get this guy really coming out of the heavens downhill. 
And it's just a huge glaring hole that Baker and company are able to kind of take advantage of. Whoop. I mean, that is, <laughs> that's a hell of a play design down here to the bottom. Whoop, got him. Nice strike. Got a chance to score. Barely tripped up. Hell of a big play. Watch that left guard go. See it pull those linebackers up. Thor and company. Whoop. I love how Baker's lined up. The back even aborts the fake or gets confused. Big time play. Let's go. Next one here. Pass pro issues continue. Uh, this one really unfortunate. This is just bad luck. Baker in the back get tripped over each other. They run a little play action dagger down here to the bottom. And on the fake here, the quarterback and running back just hit, trip each other. So whoop. I mean, that is, that is brutal right there. I will say, <laughs> I feel like I've been going off the rails recently on certain videos, but pass protection from the running back position is so critical. I personally would prefer these guys if they feel like their responsibility in the pass pro is a threat, whoever it is. Let's say the back is here one. Instead of faking, instead of the priority be the fake, the priority for me should be immediate pass protection. Let the action of the quarterback be the fake. Now, again, different teams have different philosophies. I just told you my philosophy. That would alleviate mistakes like this, these kind of friendly fire situations. This is just terrible luck. But again, it's tethered to that's back is making that fake. And then he's trying to come back out. Even if you come back out, you're in a tough angle there. You got no chance, trip, sack, huge L, damn. Next one here, first and 10, second quarter now. We're going to rip this back shoulder down here. I thought this was pretty damn impressive. I'm assuming this is a back shoulder and not like a deep hinge. Baker bobbles this thing. So I like the poise here. You know, he fumbles that thing out the gate. He's trying to throw it on time. There's a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of moving parts here. So first, I'll appreciate the snap. Watch him fumble it. Whoop. So you can see he kind of drops it right there. You can definitely see from behind he drops it. Then he's ready to throw it right there. And Mike Evans looks like he pulls the mailbox. So a few things here as I watch this back. I would say that this route that he runs up top is what Baker is expecting him to run down here. He doesn't. It looks like he throws up the mailbox. To me, that's just... The hand up, the flag up, lets him know you're open, you're going deep. Continues for another hitch. So we fumble it. Chaos. Come back. We're ready to hitch on time. Mailbox. Take another hitch. Then he throws the back shoulder. <laughs> There's so many like erratic, crazy. Okay, fumble. We're ready to go. Mike Evans does his own route. You can see him throw the mailbox up right there late. Back shoulder. So see the route up top? I think Baker's trying to throw that that same route down here to the bottom mirrored. And he feels Evans not stopping. So he's got the body control to pull it back and then rip a back shoulder. <laughs> That's pretty damn awesome. That's a lot of recess. That's a lot of chaos. Fumble snap. Uh -huh. Hitch. Different route. Still get a big chunk hookup. <laughs> wow. Next one here, third and seven. I love this one because Baker gets it off. He's hot. This is versus zero. Again, quads. Great base. Got Billy Jean bearing down his grill. Unblocked. I think the offensive line does a nice job. Got that double A gap. Center's going left. Free runner right. Got the hot right in your face. He's able to get it out quickly. The back goes and gets a first down. Takes a big shot. So, lot to like here. I've already talked about how much I enjoy quads. Okay, now, it would be one thing if we had just a little bit of time. This thing is going to be a big hit, but we've got a free rusher right here. Again, five offensive linemen, six people at the line of scrimmage, potential threats. Whatever side the center is going to, so the center is going to the left, and that's going to get a squeeze by these two, big squeeze, and we're going to get a free runner right here. So ideally, you would love your hot throw to be to the play side so you can see that free runner. That's exactly what it is right here. And then you've got to be able to put it on him with a good enough throw for him to be able to go get your first down. So excellent execution right here. Baker got the answer to the test. Catch, throw, boom. 
Again, really nice, strong base on that back foot. Ball comes out quickly, navigates the free rusher, right on the back, and go, go get a first. Nice job getting vertical. Excellent job from Baker Mayfield. Excellent job by the offensive unit having answers to the blitz. Watch the center go left. There it is. See the right guard squeeze down, right tackle squeeze down, and there's the free rusher. Beautiful. That is outstanding offensive execution in the hot blitz game. Next one here, third and five. More pass pro issues. Okay, this to me is short post again up top. I'm going to say that the back probably makes a mental error here or missed assignment. It could easily be the offensive line as well. But watch the back and the center go to the same guy. Can't both go to Thor. Get kind of fortunate, actually, that the inside linebacker in the right A-gap is running a pick stunt and runs into the guard instead of just free running right to the quarterback. So we got a mental error right there. That certainly impacts the throw. It happens faster than we want. That being said, Baker probably thinks he should make a better throw than this. So again, this is very similar to the play we already talked about. That's the short post I think should probably get the ball. Here's that two gather or shallow gather. They're running it again with, I think, with like a little mini dagger on the backside. So you kind of read this thing one, and then this kind of like low, high, high, low right here, usually two to three check down. But again, you know, they've got six in the pass protection unit. You can't have a double team in the A-gap and a guy running free in the A-gap and think you're going to have really good offensive execution. So what I'm saying here is when the back, you see the center point right there to Thor, long hair on the left. Okay, to me here, there's really only two things you can do. You can send the center here and the back is right here. You've seen teams do this. I think the, the first team I ever saw do this was McCarthy back in the day with Green Bay. But you can just, to beat this like old school Zim Blitz, double A gap, double A, mug the A gaps, you don't want the center and the back going to the same guy. That, that would never be something that you would want because then you'd have a free runner right here. And again, he's so open. He's he's trying to run a pick stun, but he's like, oh, damn, nobody's blocking me. I'm just going to go. And so what normally would happen here is if the back is here, I would expect the center to go here. You could also cross it to get a better angle, but that's a tough block. If you're asking the back, I forget what I said. I think I said I, the back makes a mistake here. If if the set, if the back is lined up here, to me, he should be blocking the long hair and the center should be going here. Because if you're asking vice versa, if you're going here to here, this is a brutal angle to be able to block a guy who's blitzing. And so either way, their pass pro is not giving Baker Mayfield a chance to play quarterback successfully. Okay. And okay, a free runner in the A gap, never good. And we probably should throw a better ball. Just slightly better, just a little hot, a little fast, a little early. That's tough though. Next one here, first and 10. We get into a really nice drive here right before the half into the second quarter. We're going to rip a whole shot up top. This is quarter, quarter, half, half up top. Corner's going to whiff. Whoop. Mike Evans puts a great move on at the line of scrimmage. Baker puts it right on him. This turns into a big chunk. So just a great job vision-wise. Again, outstanding release from Evans. 13, man. Big, but can still kind of create separation at the line of scrimmage. Can't get your hands on him. Baker does a nice job getting it out, up and over. That thing turns into a big play and stops the clock. So watch that corner up top against the number one, Mike Evans. He's going to try to put the jam on, try to bench press him. Whoop, see ya. As soon as Baker sees that, he's able to go right to the hole shot. And again, you can see the quarter-quarter element of it down here to the bottom. Half field coverage up top as that safety is working out towards the numbers. Beautiful job throwing that hole shot. Get past the safety, turns into an even bigger little mini chunk. Just a really nice job here. This is an outstanding couple series of uh, consecutive plays here for Baker Mayfield in this offense. Hit that back foot, up and over, nice touch, arm strength, vision, let's go. Very next one here, first and 10. We're going to catch one-on-one -on -one up top, same sideline. Give Mike Evans a chance, three no hitch. Beautiful ball here, staying inbounds. The corner does a nice job pushing him to the sideline. Mike Evans is just able to run by him. So just enough, you can see kind of the, the space that he has. So again, 
if you watch the channel for a long time, you've heard me talk about the red line in the league. Most NFL practice fields have a red line five yards from the sideline. That's where these wide receivers are working to try to get the, get by them, stack the corner, and then get back to the red line. So the quarterback has like a little room to fade here. Right here, you know, he's essentially two or three yards from the sideline. There's not a lot of room here. So Baker throws this thing, maybe not ideal, but out in front enough for Mike Evans to then be able to get out in front and come back and get it. He doesn't throw, what I'm saying basically is he doesn't throw him out of bounds. He doesn't fade him out of bounds. He throws him down the field, down his line. It might be a little bit inside, but it's good enough. And again, 13, one-on-one, -on -one, let's go. Beautiful catch, outstanding job. Also like the back here, taking the edge off the pass pro, boom. Not sure he did it on purpose. But that is a beautiful job. Again, catch the safety rotation. So they're in three by one. That weak safety up top is who we talk about. He's trying to cut the number three. That's one-on-one -on -one with Mike Evans on an outside release up top. Again, he just big bodies him, throws him open, big time catch, and that's two big chunks right in a row. Give yourself a chance to be tied at halftime on the road. And nice job by the back, tracking that thing, hitting the spinner. Boop. Hell yeah. Next one here, touchdown pass. A little pick up top to the tight end, a little wheel. You know, it looks like they call a flag right there. I didn't go back and see it, but this is definitely a touchdown. They get the touchdown. Nice call, nice throw, nice touch. Again, I'm not sure exactly why they picked it up. They must have thought there wasn't enough there, but this sure looks like. The number one up top is coming in here, trying to get a pick, what I'm calling a wheel, out to the flat and then up to that back pylon. So just watch this linebacker type, your boy Thor, got a lot to navigate, can't get through there, and it's a touchdown. Nice touch from Baker Mayfield. Excellent call. So no. Nice. And again, they're locking that up top, so that corner staying with the wide receiver. As opposed to down here to the bottom, watch him pass this thing off and banjo this thing from press. It's hard to do. It's pretty well done. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, what, what would you want versus this type of look? If you're going to, it's really hard to banjo this from press like this. So if you're going to run this, probably should use a different color, this, and they're just going to stay out here and stay out here, what would you want to do? You would want to get two people going the same direction. So you'd want to go out and then back to the back pylon and in. Or vice versa. You can both go out. Hey, regardless, really nice throw, nice touch, nice job finishing the half. You know, this kind of Belichick, you know, eight minutes in the middle of the game, last four minutes of the second quarter, first series of the third. Beautiful touch ball. Hell yes. Really nice job. You know, dealing with some adversity against a good team on the road with a city that wants it. Well done by, by Baker. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me. So thank you for taking the time and subscribing. We also have the Quarterback School Patreon community. Talked about it. You know about it. Join, become a member, get even more Quarterback School content. We also have Quarterback School courses. Now these courses are the premium, most in-depth content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. We have courses on RPOs. Pass protection, tempos, how to beat every coverage is the best selling course. We even have an entire offensive system available for you. So if you enjoy the way that I talk and teach ball, you will love the courses. Hop over there and enroll. We also have a bunch of free resources also linked in the video description. Hop over there, check them out. Make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. All right, second half, second and nine here. We're going to be hot down here to the bottom, a little stick. This is Baker having a hot answer. So the inconsistency of this is great. We've seen some really nice ones. We've also seen him get hit where we haven't had it protected and haven't had an answer. We've also seen pass protection errors. This is a really nice job. I don't think of stick as like a great man beater, but if they're going to try to play man on 13, let's do it. So just a little flat from the tight end. Evans on the stick. Again, you can see the free runner right in his face. They do a nice job squeezing that thing. You could even make the argument here that he's not hot and the left tackle should probably fan this thing, depending on where they're going. Where's the center go? 
I mean, I probably would make the argument that the left tackle should be fanning this thing. So he Baker makes this thing work even if he's not hot. Other thing I wanted to show is the anticipation. So watch him throw right there. He's going to throw it. Mike Evans in the slot is not coming out of the stick yet versus man. So the trust, the ball location, a little short completion, really nice job. So if the center's going left here, the left guard and left tackle should be fanning out, in my opinion. Almost universally here, these three for the three most dangerous. So the three most dangerous of who, any of these three. So you're not going to, it's not one, two, three, and if the fourth guy comes, he's on the quarterback. And that's very high school hairy. It's much more, these three have the three most dangerous on anybody who wants to come this way. So what I'm saying here is that we should get the center working over, the guard coming over, and the tackle fanning out to the guy who ends up being the free runner. So Baker overcoming pass pro deficiency here. Pass pro probably mistake from 78. Uh, you can see 64 does a nice job. Whoa, really nice job. Ball's right on him, on the body, on the break. Let's roll. Next one here, third and four. Another hot pass pro situation where the Bucks are getting exposed. This time we get to empty, three by two. We're going to be hot up top. Billy Jean, free rusher, sack. Again, we're looking the other way, which I don't think helps. Uh, this is putting the right tackle in a big, big kind of stressful situation. You can see the right tackle, right guard communicating. This is five-person protection, 5-0 five call. So if Thor, long here, hits the A-gap, the right guard and right tackle have to come down. You can see them pointing to each other. They know exactly what they're doing. But if they bail out, we now have to set back, and there's no way we can get all the way back. 97, too good of a player, too fast, sack. So they get you by pass pro scheme. You got to tip your hat. My thing about it is this to me plays out like a hot. So if you get a free runner if, from a quarterback standpoint, I know we could have a different conversation for the pass pro unit. But for the quarterback here, if they are going to 5-0 this thing, so five down, okay, we've got five in the pass protection. If they're going to bring an additional guy into the A-gap to whatever side, so if he were to walk this side, this side would squeeze. Whatever side he goes to is going to get the squeeze. That then tells the quarterback that we are going to have a free runner potentially from that side. If that is the case, I prefer, okay, again, pronouns, okay, listen up. I, just my philosophy, I prefer to throw hot into it so that I can see the free runner and know how much time I have. If that was the case, the ball probably would go right here hot. You know, that's obviously not the case, Captain, because we're looking over here. I think somebody drops off into our lane, and now we can't throw. Okay, so just, you know, having the answers sometimes, sometimes being good with the hot throws, sometimes knowing where to go with the ball. Again, if we're playing up top, where does the ball go? The outside number one. Boop. Again, super easy with a clicker marker months later. Don't get it twisted. But again, I think you can really see the detail and understanding that goes into the pass pro and the hot blitz answers. And I love, when, when I tell you that I love this kind of communication. So pointing, hey, we've got the squeeze. So I, I would bet a lot of money that the call would be a 5-0 call from the center. Again, all that does is go five one-on-one -on -one blocks as kind of the base rule. But 5-0 is built in with a squeeze. So if anybody else, so say this guy, were to come into the A gap here, we don't let free runners through the A or the B gap. Never. Okay? Although they've done it multiple times in this game. So what we do here is squeeze this thing. So if he walks up, we're then going to squeeze, squeeze, and the quarterback knows, and we want the widest rusher to be the free rusher. But again, hard to see that when you're looking this way for your number one. So you've got to have these things. You've got to have your hots and your reads tethered to the pass protection. That's how these things work in conjunction. It's not just, hey, you five guys, block them up, and uh, we'll try to rip it down the field. Oh, shit. First and 10 here. I thought this was a really nice job from Baker Mayfield creating, not forcing it. Wants to throw it on time, not there. 
get outside the pocket, beautiful little touch ball when the defender turns his back. So this is a hell of a job. So watch 22, the running back. This is a big boy collision. And you got to stand up there, blunt him. He tries to give you the arm over, tell Thor to run right through his face, but good enough pass pro. We're getting right guard back into our lap. Can't make the throw, get outside the pocket. As soon as the defender, so right here, this is where we're going to throw the ball. As soon as the defender turns his back, so you see the back of his numbers, the back of his jersey, you can throw this thing. So as you get outside the pocket and he's working with you, you're kind of in the same relationship. As soon as he turns, you see this, the ball comes out. That That's open. Because he can't, you know, I guess technically he could turn around and pick it off, but pretty hard to turn around, find the ball, catch it. So there it is. He turns his back, throw it. It's a dot on the sidelines. Nice little chunk. Well done. So you can see Baker here not forcing it. Wants to get the ball out on time. No. Outside the play, outside the structure of the design, we can go create, make a play, show some touch, show some really nice decision making. So no. Don't force it. Go create dot on the sidelines. Hell yeah. Next one here. Beautiful offensive architecture. We're going to hit the tight end up top. The new number three on a little out and up. With that skinny post right in that sweet spot or hole shot. Just a really nice job of attacking middle field clo closed zone structure. Great design. Beautiful throw right up on him. Would love to keep his feet and make it even better. But man, that's a big chunk. So a few different things here design-wise. We're going to catch closed. Okay, so as we work to the middle of the field here, thirds, thirds, we're rotating down. Okay, when we get with this motion, so two by two to essentially three by one, we're fast in the flat. Okay, so that flat defender is going to feel that and kind of get with early. And we're going to couple that with a kind of a skinny post, like up the numbers post. Not a fat post where we could pass it off to the middle field player. So this skinny post matters because then we're going to come right off of his ear and run this out. We've already got this, right? Fast to the flat. We're going to run this out and up right behind him. So we want to pull that corner vertically. We want to pull that flat defender horizontally, and then that's going to create the void for the tight end. So really nice offensive architecture. Great design. Get the horizontal stretch with the flat, the vertical stretch with the post, and the double move. And that's outstanding, right? That's a country zone killer. Woo and again, you have to have the time to make those double move throws. That's a better throw than that catch. Keep your feet in even bigger play. Nice pass pro. Again, 97 is a good player. Goes inside, beats the left tackle. Back does a nice job helping take that hit off. Nice touch from Baker. That's a big chunk. Let's go. Next one here, third and 10. This is a hell of a call. <laughs> Watch the back here. We're going to end up getting zero, and the edge players are going to like peel off. So 97 trying to cover the back in space. This ends up being like a little running back delay screen. It ends up being a tailback screen. Beautiful call if you can get it off. So if you have enough time versus pressure to throw these back screens, it's great. Got no chance right there. Walk into the end zone. So what am I talking about? This little like triple A battery blitz. So we start in three by two, right? So three by two, this is zero, right? It looks like zero across the board. What they end up doing coverage wise here is these guys drop off these edge players, but they're bringing three up the middle. So if you have enough time as he comes in here to get this thing off, we're going to have the right tackle right to 97. You're going to have one of the guards come out to block essentially nobody, and you got to escort into the end zone. So you've got to have time to make these backfield calls, backfield throws in the screen game, but if you can get them off, there's nobody there. Get the first guy covered up with the right tackle. There it is. Really nice job by the right tackle feeling this thing out. It's a bit of a weird look on a screen. He goes out, takes him, walk in. Nice job. Nice block by the tight end as well. That's just a beautiful call. So again, you can see they've got two guys and they've got guys in each A-gap, right? So we're here. 
We're here, and then we're going to hit this thing from the heavens. Okay, he's going to be free, but he's coming from depth, right? So you've got to be able to kind of buy this time and get out here. And again, 97 is into coverage, so the tackle can set. There's nobody there, and he goes immediately and blocks him, and we're able to kind of walk our way into the end zone. Just great call, great feel, excellent execution in the screen game. Nice job by Baker having enough time. Easy, catchable throw. Not the most difficult throw in the world. Nice block, great execution, touchdown. Next one here, you know, the game is essentially on the line here. Fourth and 14, down by 14, less than six minutes to go. We're going to run double post over. So double post down here to the bottom. We're going to hit Mike Evans up top, coming down here to the on the over, the crosser. Again, Baker to his right, kind of buying a little bit of time, off-platform throw. This is a big-time hookup. Keep them in the game, even with a small chance here. And That's a, that's a big-time rush from 97 all the way into the A-gap. Wrecking havoc. Baker off-platform, beautiful touch. That is a massive play to keep them, to allow them to continue to think they have a chance. So watch the pocket movement. Over, up, touch. Again, you can see the structure of the double post down here to the bottom, right? Double post with the over coming to you. Look at the stem that Mike Evans has up top. Over, up, over. And again, just a little nuance here of how great of a route this is. Up. And then this vertical push makes this corner have to be a vertical threat. He's worried about that vertical threat. That allows this route to work as the pick. So then we get that pick, and now we're able to continue this thing all the way across the field. It's just a, it takes a while, but Baker's able to buy enough time. But man, the artistry in that route up top connected to Goodwin on the chip, that's a big time play. Now, it's too bad you had to wait until you were down 14 on the 4th and 14 to rip it out. But still, that's excellent execution on the perimeter. Nice feel from Baker. Good enough athlete. Great touch. Nice chunk. Next one here, Baker Mayfield showing off some really nice anticipation. Speed out down here to the bottom. Three, no hitch. Balls out with great anticipation. A strike. Nice job with the read as well. This is quarter, quarter, half. So quarters to the right. Half field coverage to the left. Take that free access. Well done. Now, not my favorite drop in the world, but I love the anticipation. So see him hit that back foot right there, right on the back leg, and let that thing go before the wide receiver down here to the bottom is out of the break on the speed out. And again, the technique of that corner bailing with his rear to the sideline, you have anything you want outside the numbers. Now, when I say not my favorite drop, okay, this is not necessarily like an indictment on Baker Mayfield. I just don't love when people take a three-step drop. So one, then that second step okay, is like underneath yourself. And the third step follows right on top of it. So it's almost like this like dance. And if you can, if it's if it's a rhythm thing, a timing thing, it makes sense to me. To me, it's just unnecessarily difficult. I prefer just take one hitch throw or shuffle hitch throw. See, like that Brady shuffle is the same timing. To me, this is three no hitch, but watch that second step. So false step, left foot, okay. One, two, I mean, it's what? Six inches behind the first step. The third step is right on the second step. So it's it's very dance-ish. Like, da -da -da, and it works here. It's just, to me, unnecessarily difficult. Right here, I love the anticipation. Short side, good read. Ball's right on him. Strike. Let's go. Next one here, first and 10. We're going to work a corner or a circus down here to the number one. Read that cloud corner. Just means rolled up corner. This is a big time throw. <laughs> this is a tight window throw. My goodness. Takes a big shot. 97. Again, just wrecking shot. Continues to hit the quarterback. That is a small, tiny window throw. So bottom of the screen, watch that corner. We're going to high-low him. Tight end in the flat. I mean, he puts that thing in there. When does he let that thing go, right? The air. I mean, that is a small window, right? So first of all, we've got that in. We're reading this corner right here. Well, he never really turns to the flat. He's always kind of with his getting depth. We're throwing that thing with anticipation, right? Capital A. 
Here's that route coming out to the corner or to the seven. Here's the flat. We're high low in this corner. I mean, look at this throw. Right? Like, I mean, that, that's right on him. You you got to put that thing right on him like a laser. This is a big, big time throw. And again, I get it. You're going to have to take some chances at this point in the game. But throwing a back shoulder like that with anticipation, three hitch, rip. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty sweet. That's pretty sweet. I don't care what time of the game it is. Playoff football. Woo. Look at that window. I mean... <laughs> You're kind of surprised that corner doesn't get a hand on it. That is just a beautiful throw. I mean, that is tight window outside the numbers, pushing it down the field. Next one here, another beautiful anticipation throw. This is a touchdown up top to Mike Evans. This is a really cool design play. This is double post with the tight end on a swinger wheel. Mike Evans is there. There's a few different big shots here. This is a hell of a throw. Nice job going up to get it. Awesome accuracy, precision, timing, rhythm. That's a beautiful ball. Really like the design of this too because you'll see the tight end pops for probably a touchdown as well. This is a red quarters killer. So design-wise here, what am I talking about? Double post. So to me here, on paper, this thing is just double post. And you've got this wheel right behind it. I think they have the back coming this way and then the shallow coming to it. So you probably read this thing inside out to the wheel. This throw, though, is a dot. And it's played with great anticipation. Again, bold, capitalize, increase the font, whatever you want to say. This is a dot. And it's awesome design. Because if you didn't throw this, this is going to be there. If you didn't have that, this is going to be there. So you've got all these kind of good runaway opportunities. But first, let's appreciate the design here. Just... No to the post. Look at the tight end. And now how about this throw? Anticipation. He's letting it go right there. Look at Mike Evans. Again, I'm calling this red quarters. It's just red zone quarters. Okay, four across. You're going to run the first one through. He's going to let this one go. He kind of comes up and almost runs like a stock or stutter-ish post. But it's just a dot of a throw. Put it up where your big guy can go get it. Nice job. And then if you're wondering how the hell you actually would cover this, you, you would probably have to have your flat defender here carry the wheel. So he's flat to wheel. So as you get this look up and into the flat, once he goes to the wheel, you're going to have to go with him here. Or else this thing's never going to, you got no chance on defense there. Just a really nice job. A beautifully executed, too little, too late touchdown. Doesn't take away from the quality of it, though. Really nice. Really like this drive from Baker Mayfield. He was spinning it here, letting it loose. Baker at his best. Last one here is a bummer to end on. A pick to close out the season. Probably picks the wrong side here, coverage-wise. We talked about that speed out earlier. He hit versus quarter, quarter, half. This time he works the half field. And the backer makes a nice play. Goes and gets it. Edge. Uh. You know, you. I see the space in there that he's trying to attack. Again, it's one of those things where philosophically how you want to how you want to handle this type of pressure. So they end up picking up the pressure from this side. When we kind of get this movement and this guy dropping back here, you can see the void. Okay, but for whatever reason, we don't have the time to be able to let this guy get in here and work this space. As opposed to what I'm saying here, if this is half field coverage down here, and this is quarters up here. You know, the space where you think you would attack is is out here. Okay, so anything out there like that speed out we hit earlier, as opposed to, you know, feeling like you got to rush and force this kind of in on a second down when you're down by eight, you got a chance on the road, you know, that's a force, right? There's really no good options other than the number one up top on the little stop route, but that <laughs> that's a dangerous throw too. So no good options. We force it. They make a nice play, and that's a wrap on the season. So tough way to end it. Again, especially because he was playing so well the previous series. But just, a, you know, you, you can see, right, the panicky kind of office spot away from the pressure. They do a good job of picking it up. You know, you'd love the back to make it a little cleaner. But they sort it out eventually with the cross action. And we just can't quite put it where we want and that's a bummer.
So that is a wrap. Baker Mayfield, the Bucks, running up against a really impressive kind of organizational win for the Detroit Lions at home in the playoffs. A lot going against the Bucks in this game. I thought for the most part, Baker played pretty well. I felt like he got better as the game went on all the way up until that last pick where you just felt like forced it maybe when you didn't have to, but really had to overcome some pass pro issues, whether it was scheme centric, you know, position, mental errors, mental mistakes, didn't give them really a chance to be successful over the course of the whole game. But I thought he battled through, gave his guys some opportunities to make plays for him, and they did down the field, and they were able to hang tough. Just wasn't enough in the end. Regardless, thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.